think this is probably probably it. So I'll just get started. Okay. So there's two examples we're going to be running through. One is a uh, perfectly stirred reactor um, in which we're going to be taking care of or we're going to be taking advantage of kind of a clever use of um, user defined functions um, within uh, Python and Cantera. And then the second one is going to be a packed bed reactor um, that we're simulating as a series of CSTRs. So to get started, um, we're going to import all of the modules that we need or all the packages that we need. So that's going to be um, Cantera, NumPy, SciPy, Dot integrate, which we'll get to later. Um, and then matplotlib. Um, let's give that a second. Had to restart this a second ago, so. Okay. So we're going to start out with making our 1D, um, or sorry, 0D perfectly stirred reactor. Um, we have a pretty straightforward set of uh, governing equations for that. Um, I won't read this entire block of text, um, but basically um, we're gonna simulate a constant volume um, reaction chamber with an inlet and outlet, so like a CSTR uh, basically. And then we're going to control our flow rate into and out of the reactor. Um, lost my place here. Um, so for this, we're going to be taking advantage of um, the pressure controller uh, object within Cantera. Uh, calculates the mass flow rate using this equation. Um, we're also going to be using the mass flow controller. Um, mass flow controller, we're going to be setting as our um, sorry, it's a poorly formatted file that I'm looking at for my answers here. Um, mass flow controller, I believe, is going to be our inlet. So that's going to control our um, species in and more fractions. And then we're going to use the uh, pressure controller for the outlet flow rate. So let's set up our Cantera simulation. Uh, what is this? Bear with me for one second. Um, the file I'm looking at doesn't seem to match what we have here. Okay, I see. Okay. So we're going to define our gas solution phase. And then very quickly, since I think everybody here has seen some permutation of this today, um, we're going to specify our temperature, pressure, and our mole fractions for our reactor. So then next, um, we're going to create two objects that are called reservoirs for our upstream and our downstream. I think, and um, maybe Ray and China can uh, fact check me on this. I believe the downstream composition that we have for this example is more or less arbitrary since we're not feeding this into another reactor. Um, but our upstream 
um, composition is basically the gas so we're feeding into the reactor. Um, so specifying both of these gives us basically a place for our mass flow controller to feed from and then our pressure controller to feed to. All right. So now uh, we're going to run for our gas similar to the adiabatic flame example. Um, the equilibrate rate function at constant uh, enthalpy and pressure. So then we're also going to set up, um, for those of you who were in the previous session, um, we're going to set up our reactor object. So for that, we're choosing the constant volume variable pressure uh, ideal gas reactor and we're feeding in our gas uh, solution phase to that. And then this is where uh, we take advantage oops, of our kind of clever uh, implementation for a user defined function. Um, so it's relatively straightforward um, what it's doing, but let's take a moment to break it down. Um, my apologies for the poorly formatted comment here, or doc string. Um, but basically, um, we have two phases. We have the graphite anode and the uh, electrolyte, and then I think also I might be getting be some uh, audio from another session. Okay, thanks. So, what we're defining here is a function that basically um, gives us our mass flow rate as a function of residence time. So what this allows us to do is while we're running the reactor, we're able to change it so that we can get a constant residence time for a given mass flow rate. So we're, we're keeping the residence time constant and we're changing our mass flow rate. Um, so what does this look like? this. So first, we'll specify our inlet flow controller, which again is going to be a mass flow controller. We're using our upstream reservoir and we're specifying that it's feeding our reactor object that we created above. Then we specify um, for this inlet, what our mass flow rate is going to be, which is going to be that M dot in. And then for the outlet, we're specifying um, that pressure controller that we talked about above. So it's feeding from the reactor and it's feeding into the downstream reservoir. It's being controlled, I guess, or modulated by um, our inlet uh, mass flow controller. And then this K value um, is, I think our effective resistance, um, similar to a valve K. Um, so basically this specifies our pipes coming in and coming out of our perfectly stirred reactor. Um, I didn't run this cell. So. Indent. Also, would you mind just zooming in a little bit? The text is a little bit hard to read. Absolutely. Thank you. Is that better? <laughs> yeah, it's a lot better. Cool. Perfect. I have a formatting issue. Give me one second. I think. Perfect. 
again, if I'm going too fast for anybody, please just um, I'm not being too great at looking at the chat, but just um, let somebody know and then they can turn on their mic and tell me. Okay. Um, so the next piece is we're going to run our reactor. This is not very nicely formatted when I just copy and paste it. Um, so let's parse what this is telling us. Um, So basically, um, and again, I don't know how many of you were in the last session, but we're creating this reactor net object, uh, I think, to fully showcase what it can be used for. Um, you can have multiple reactors that you're solving within a system. For ours, we're just putting our reactor object in here. Um, for our reactor network, we're going to specify a max time step um, that we're allowing when we're running our solution. Um, and then we're also specifying a end time where we will truncate basically our simulation. Um, the intention is to run this to steady state, which we'll see when we plot out everything. Um, we're gonna set up a couple of empty lists so we can use just for writing data. So that's time temperature and then our mass flow rate. And then this block will just run our simulation. So while we're less than our specified um, end time, which is gonna be five times our residence time, we're gonna append our reactor net wall clock time or however you wanna refer to it. We're gonna append our temperature, our mass flow rate, and then we're gonna step our reactor. Um, so, Now that we've run that, we can construct, see how nicely this comes out, um, a plot that shows our temperature and our mass flow rate as we are trying to keep our resonance time constant. So, after about one millisecond, we've more or less achieved a steady state. So that's kind of a creative approach to making a reactor system um, or reactor simulation where you can hold your residence time constant by varying the mass flow rate. Chris, can you scroll up just to the code that did the plot, I think? People yep. didn't yeah, get a chance absolutely. to actually see how yep. that happened. Yep. Great. Thank you, China, for copying and pasting that. Um, okay. Doing okay on time. Um, We'll just finish out this example and then we'll hold for questions. Um, okay. So the next piece of that is um, we're going to vary our residence time until our steady state solution yields a non-reacting solution. Um, we're gonna use Pandas and construct a data frame, which is a nice library that is useful for basically storing and plotting data. It has some wrappers for matplotlib. Um, you can do all sorts of um, data manipulation um, that you could abstract to Excel, but you can do it from your Python um, code. So it's, it's pretty convenient. Um, okay. So if that all is incorrectly. So we're going to define a 
instead of our lin space like we have in the other examples, we're going to define a logarithmic array of values. Um, and then we're going to construct a solution array, um, again, similar to past examples um, that we're going to use to store the output of our simulation. Oops. So the way that we've constructed this is basically each row in our solution array is going to correspond to a different residence time and each column is going to be a different equivalence ratio or phi. So then this is, I'll stay on this one for a little bit because this is basically iterating through similar to um, the above single example, we're going to be iterating through a whole bunch of these um, reaction simulations, reactor simulations, um, and getting our So we're essentially iterating over um, our space of, um, I guess, uh, phi's and resonance times. That ran quicker than I thought. And now we're able to plot from that um, solution array that we constructed. Um, we're able to plot our temperature versus phi versus resonance time. Um, so I guess before we jump into the packed bed reactor, um, maybe we can take like a few minutes for questions about this example. And if people have questions, about theory or implementation, um, we can try to field them. Really? Nobody? So the extinction is uh, residence time is where the steep jump in temperature occurs. Is that right? Run that by me one more time. Sorry, Vidya. So the ex extinction residence time will be the time where the steep jump in the plot. Because uh, it's essentially, yeah. Um, and uh, Ray and China, feel free to jump in here, but um, I think it's essentially where we've basically used up or our reactions have essentially run to equilibrium. Um, it's when, well, it's when the when you're not actually getting any temperature rise in the reactor anymore, right? And that the reactor temperature is essentially the inlet temperature. Hold yeah. on. So yeah, that like I think if you plotted these with a, a marker on the line, you'd see that like there aren't any points on that vertical line. So like there's there's a bunch of points at the bottom, and mm -hmm. then there'll just be a, a jump up to part, you know, where the temperature is above a thousand Kelvin. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, uh, 
doesn't work. Just O, not dash, I think. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, I see. So we ran, yeah, there's a bunch of simulations at, at those different residence times, but like there aren't any uh, stable solutions in the middle there. Um, Also, are we going to have the completed Jupyter notebooks available for people after um, this is done, or is it just going to be the recordings? I think I, I I'm assuming we'll post the the notebooks with all the uh, answers. Yeah, I'll I'll ping Brian, um, but I think that or the PDF versions, which essentially is the same thing. Um, but I'll ask. Yeah. Okay. Okay, um, I guess the 2019 notebook for quicks have the completed code form I saw. Great. Um, yeah, so we should be we should be pushing the completed notebooks. Um, okay. Um, I guess it, it, we can jump into the next example. Um, if people do have questions, uh, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, all right. So this next example is concerning uh, pack bed reactors within Canterra. I guess luckily I'm the one who is running this because I had a typo with our formula here. Um, so this example, um, it's actually one of our Python examples um, on our website. Um, but what it does essentially is it approximates a plug flow reactor using a series of CSTRs. So the reactor object that we created um, within the last example, we're basically creating a CSTR reactor object or an ideal gas reactor, I think similar to the last one. And we're basically reusing it over and over again, but we're giving it a differentially small volume so that as we shrink our CSTR, um, I think if people recall from uh, undergrad kinetics, you're essentially by making your CSTR volume smaller and smaller, you're estimating basically a differential slice of a plug flow reactor. Um, if you're neglecting, um, you know, essentially, uh, like if you're evaluating it as an independent um, piece, I guess, um, and you're assuming that there's no mixing or back mixing um, within that reactor. Um, so it's a clever way to create a plug flow reactor given the existing um, infrastructure that we have. I think we may be working on a pack bed reactor that we're going to implement within Canterra, um, but currently um, this is a decent workaround. Um, so to get started, going to open up my cheat sheet. Okay. So we're similarly going to import Cantera, matplotlib, and then we'll start by specifying again, our inputs for the reactor. So we're gonna have to specify a number of things for this. We're gonna have to look at the dimensions of the reactor. So the basically the radius and length of our, um, our tube essentially that we're creating for the plug flow reactor. Um, the effective catalyst area. Um, so basically how much um, catalyst we have within our reactor. Um, 
we're going to be evaluating the catalyst properties. So that's um, surface area to volume ratio and then porosity. Um, the inlet conditions, the flow rate, and then our mole fractions. And then, like we talked about up here, um, we have to specify a large number of CSTRs for this so it doesn't take forever. It's going to be relatively small. Um, it's going to give us okay resolution. But um, basically, we're specifying a set number that act as our differential piece of that um, pack bed reactor. So plug those in and get rid of all this nasty formatting here. Looks like okay. So specify temperature, specify the length in meters, specify the area meters squared. Cat area per volume is going to be meters squared per meter cubed. Velocity meters per second. Porosity unitless. Number of reactors is, again, just the number of reactors we're using to approximate this. So then we're going to create our phases for this. So for a heterogeneous system like this, um, your DML file, I guess, unless you're pulling from two different ones, but if you're using one like I am in this example, which is built into Kantara, we have a methane pox on PT example. Um, you have two surfaces and within the YAML file, they each have a name. So when we're loading in the gas phase file, um, I'm not even sure if it's the only phase if you even have to specify, and I don't think we have in the previous examples, but we're creating this phase independently. And then for the surface, so we've created a gas solution phase and we specified temperature, pressure, compositions. For the surface or the, the platinum, I guess, in this example, we're specifying this interface object. So we're going to be using the same YAML file that should be able to tell which reactions occur within each phase. We're specifying the name of the phase that we're constructing. And then we also specify um, the adjacent bulk phase, which is the gas. And then we're setting our temperature and our pressure to our temp and pressure that we specified for the gas phase. So, We have a couple of calculations to get through before we run the reactor. One is we're going to specify or we're going to calculate the length of the reactor or each differential reactor that we're constructing. So that's basically giving us the dimensions of our tiny slice reactor or CSTR that we're running. We'll then get a volume for that reactor. We're going to get our total cat area, which is just going to be our cat area per volume times the reactor volume. While we're all here. I think somebody's mic turned on. Um, is there a question? They just remuted themselves, so I'm assuming it was an accident. Great. Uh, cool. So then we're going to calculate the catalyst area. 
um, within each differential reactor. And then our overall mass flow rate is going to be the velocity times our gas density and then times our uh, cross-sectional area. Um, one thing to note for constructing this, and this can also apply to um, just a more simple, I guess, like a, a fluidized CSTR type reactor. Um, if you're only running one reactor in isolation is to converge properly sometimes. And I think this is similar to Chemkin um, for people who have used Chemkin, but having a good initial guess of your surface compositions can help um, converge upon a solution. So sometimes you'll get um, solver errors if you haven't basically specified a um, good initial guess um, because it's just too far from the equilibrium solution. Um, so these are currently our concentrations on the surface. Um, we can run So there's a couple of ways to approach this. Um, there's uh, advanced coverages. And this isn't the only application for this function, but you can advance the coverages on the surface by a set time period. And that'll essentially step forward one time, um, or sorry, one second within the simulation and get your coverages at that point. Um, I believe there's also a equilibrate function that you can run similar to the gas phase. Um, but you can also just specify initially what you want your surface concentrations or your uh, surface site fractions to be. And similar to the gas phase, um, these should normalize if you enter in something that's above um, that goes over one. So it'll correct itself. Um, so now we're going to construct our reactor object and then our upstream and downstream reservoirs like we did in the last one. not run this cell. All right, I forgot to run the cell where we calculate our reactor volume. Um, so this creates um, an ideal gas reactor. We're going to set the energy to off. Energy on basically um, means it's non-isothermal. Um, you're calculating or you're including the energy equation, I guess. Um, so you're going to have, depending on the reaction, you know, a temperature rise or fall. Um, for this example, we're just going to leave it off because in some situations it can lead to convergence um, issues. I think for this mechanism, it shouldn't. Um, so then we will create like in the last example, uh, upstream reservoir, uh, downstream reservoir. So in this situation, um, basically the outlet of our differential reactor is gonna feed into this downstream and we're gonna feed from our upstream. We're gonna have a mass flow controller for the upstream and a pressure controller for the downstream, similar to the other example. Next, we're going to create, again, our reactor network. Oops, copied too much. Okay.
So this is creating a reactor net. Um, this isn't required, um, but you can specify for the solver uh, maximum number of error test fails. I think um, there's a number of other um, components that you can specify for that, I think, um, but we won't get too far into it um, unless you have questions about it. Um, and then we're setting up our RTAL and ATAL for the simulation. Um, so the last piece is running the reactor. So there's a lot going on here. So I'm gonna step through this. Um, so first we're generating a solution array. Um, this is gonna store our um, thermal information for our gas phase. Um, and then also an extra variable called distance. Um, so that's basically just going to be the point down the reactor that we're at. So for each of our differential reactors, we're incrementing by a set length along our PFR. Um, then for the range of N reactors, so the 201 reactors that we specified, we're going to first make it so that our gas is currently at the state that it exited the previous reactor. So that basically we're feeding one solution into the next um, reactor that we're trying to simulate in series. We're going to reinitialize and then we're going to run that differential CSTR to steady state. So then the steady state solution from that reactor gets fed into the next reactor and so on and so forth until we reach the end of the simulation. Um, from that, we're appending our solution. So basically this thermostate is gonna give us temperature, pressure, mole fractions, et cetera. And then also the distance. Oops, upstream. Is not defined. Missed that one. Okay. So then we're also printing out so we can see basically our progress along this. Um, those column titles aren't formatted very nicely, but basically um, it goes from zero to 300 millimeters. We can see our CH4 mole fraction, H2 mole fraction, um, you see that they're decreasing, I guess, as we go along. Um, okay, so then we're going to plot our solution, which is pretty easy if we're using um, the, let's see, the states object that we made earlier. So this basically gives us our um, species mole fractions down the um, uh, pack bed reactor. So hopefully that was straightforward. Um, do we have any questions or comments about this example? Or I guess since we're close to the end of the day, anything that we've covered uh, maybe in the afternoon or morning sessions.
looking through the questions. So a lot of issues. Plug flow gets pretty artificial. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, I think externally um, for pack bed reactor that I think includes um, you know, some of the important, um, I mean, I believe you can do things like pressure drop um, within a plug flow reactor. I haven't myself implemented it, but in terms of like mass transfer limitations, um, heat transfer, I believe one of the grad students in our group is working on um, externally we have a package that's able to run it and I'm not I'm not sure um, if we plan on incorporating that um, I guess um, somebody else might be able to comment on that um, but there is something constructed that actually does a pretty good job of simulating that um, I think it uses sundials as well I think it's just a matter of incorporating it into Cantera, but I don't know if that's planned on um, Ray, do you know if Gondali's pack bed reactor program is that? I I hope that's going to make its way back yeah. in some form. I, it, it may remain sort of a, a separate solver, um, but you know it's yeah it's I mean it's 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 it ends up being kind of related to the the one D problems right is if you're, you're trying to solve, um, you know, if, if you, depending on how you're, what, what equations you're, you're trying to solve that you end up with something you have, uh, if, if you have, you know, diffusion in one direction and then you can kind of solve it as a method of lines thing. Um, I think it becomes, uh, uh, solvable in that framework uh yeah i'm, I'm it, not i'm not super familiar with with the solver that she's or, or what you know what what geometry and and uh approximations she's got in that case though right um but yeah i guess um that kind of answers the question, I guess, Phil, to some extent. Um, yeah, I think I think I haven't attempted it um, personally, but um, the, it's I mean, it's possible because I mean, a lot of things are possible, but you can account for um, some of these things. Uh, it, it's going to take, I think, if you're doing it within like the existing infrastructure, I think you could, in theory, build something um, to account for, I guess, back mixing a uh, heat transfer, I think is relatively easy, depending on depending on how complicated you want to make it. Um, but in theory, you can, I think, accommodate a lot of these things within, um, or using Cantera at least. Um, I know that's kind of a non-answer, um, but it's anything is possible. <laughs> uh, I guess this is one part of an answer. I think we try to draw a distinction between you know the things that it makes sense for Cantera to be good at, which is is the representation of the you know the thermodynamics, the chemistry, and the the transport coefficients. Once you get into things where you're where you know the interest is in sort of uh geometry that uh you know of, of a of a real system then you know you kind of want to bring in some other packages that are that are better at representing that and doing uh you know solving equations in that kind of environment um yeah uh, i don't i don't think we have a lot of good examples put together of that yet but uh hopefully that's something that'll grow. Let's 
concerned about oxidation. Yeah, I guess oxidation is a whole other, a whole other, I guess, can of worms. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, I think Steve DeCallaway from our group uh, is, and possibly also uh, Richard West, um, you know, Richard's specialty is in catalysis, but I think they they both um, know quite a bit about it. So maybe, I don't know if we have open discussion at the end for this, but possibly talking with them in the gather.town meeting um, might be helpful. Um, any other questions? Thanks, uh, Phil. That was really insightful, and you know, I, I'm not an expert, so I apologize for, um, you know, it, regarding catalysis, um, not having a ton of information. Um, is there anything, any code, anyone would like to see again? Um, that maybe we went too quickly by. Open phone. Uh, um, guess I could. I know there have been questions on the user group about it over the years. I don't know that anyone's shared a, a working example. So I, I, I don't know whether that means they tried it and gave up or that they tried it, got it to work and didn't share it with anyone. Yeah, I guess I'm not sure if enhancements is a good um, representation of people are actively working on, but I, I guess it's been, it sounds like it's been tossed around. Um, I'm actually unfamiliar with open foam. What, what, what exactly is it? Is it so it's a CFD package I basically. See. So, I mean, it, deals with all of the, you know, solving Navier-Stokes and, and custom equations on, you know, and does all of the meshing and da, 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 MPI, this and that to run it across a cluster, you know, all, all kinds of stuff that's kind of above the, the level that, that Kintera right. wants to really operate. So like you can, I think, I, I mean, you can, I think in principle, you could use Kintera in that framework. I would just, haven't seen anyone share a uh, example where they've done it. These two papers, interesting. Okay. Nice. Thanks, Matthias. Well, if any, if, if any of those authors wants to uh, highlight one of those examples and, and share it with the Cantera community and be happy to post it on our webpage. Okay. Um, I'll leave it open. Um, I guess people are still formulating stuff, but um, I guess thanks for coming, everyone. Um, let me see real quick what we have after this. I guess 4 p.m. is it, or we might have uh, something in the gather.town. I think people are welcome to go hang out there, I guess. Um, I don't think we had anything specifically yeah. planned, but yeah. Great. Uh, I'll, I'll probably try to stick around there for a little bit and see if people had questions or something. Yeah. 
I guess Matthias, do you have uh, DOI uh, 